Welcome everybody, thanks for joining me today. My name is Marcus Norg and I'm with CAMERA, the Center for Advanced Mathematics for Energy Research Applications. And today I want to talk about autonomous data acquisition. When I say autonomous data acquisition, I mean that we have to create a closed loop that does not need any human input for decision making. This closed loop is between some instrument, some detector, and some decision-making tool that can tell the instrument what to do next. For this, we have developed GPCAM, a tool that is based on a Gaussian process that can tell the instrument uh, which place in a large parameter space uh, to measure next. This parameter space is spanned by uh, parameters, the instrument, but also the sample uh, depend on. What we see here is our very first experiment we ran at NSLS2 in Brookhaven about three and a half years ago. What we have here in the middle is a nanoparticle stain and on the right hand side, this stain is explored using traditional raster scanning. This is a very typical technique when we are in low dimensional spaces like here with the two dimensional parameter space. Um, on the right hand side, we, we see GPCAM working. We see how when several measurements are placed, GPCAM can learn from those uh, from those measurements and learn something about the sample and then place more measurements in interesting regions, thereby saving uh, compute time, uh, beam time, and staff time. This technique has been used all around the world. Uh, a lot of users are at Brookhaven National Laboratory, many in Berkeley at the uh, ALS and the Molecular Foundry, uh, but also uh, it has uh, reaches as far as uh, France and uh, uh, Britain. GPCAM is based on uh, getting a posterior probability density function um, after some data was measured and then using this posterior probability density function to place measurements. In the simplest case, uh, this is done by placing measurements where the uncertainty is a maximum. And this is what we see in this little animation. So we see here after three measurement points, this function that describes the uncertainty. And if I now go to the maximum of this uncertainty, we see how uh, the overall uncertainty is gradually lowered, which is often the overall goal uh, in an experiment to learn the model function in the most efficient way. This is based on a Gaussian process, but what is a Gaussian process? A Gaussian process gets its name from a Gaussian probability density function I place over a function space. This function space is made up of all the model function that can possibly uh, interpolate and explain the data we have measured. The Gaussian property density function can be learned based on data and then conditioned to yield the posterior I was mentioning earlier. And based on the posterior, we can make decisions um, how to optimally investigate the parameter space. As I said, we made a GPCAM the software. It's freely available online. It's based on two downstream APIs, FEGP and HDDL. HDDL is a high performance um, optimizer that is used for training, but also for the prediction. And FEGP is a very flexible multitask Gaussian process tool. In fact, so flexible that most kinds of domain and physics knowledge can be injected into GPCAM and used for, the, for decision making. And these are some of the directions uh, we're working on right now and in the future, constraint, li uh, constraint likelihood optimizations, advanced kernel designs, linear transform of GPs, and uh, sophisticated objective or acquisition functions uh, for feature extraction. Thank you for watching. If you want to know more about GPCAM, please contact me at marcusnowak at lblo.com.